in the name of Jesus drought in your life that even when it is physical rainy season it is still dry season spiritually financially and otherwise I decree and declare let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall you welcome to another spirit filled message on christocentric message if you're new to this channel i would entreat you to hit on that subscribe button and then to like this video as well i would want you to share this message across because we believe that as this message is coming forth it's going to bless you Her graces are going to be imparted onto you and then god is going to visit your home thank you for watching stay blessed It is important that we begin to return to the foundational truths upon which the believer's confidence lies on. Else, we are going to lose a whole generation to confusion. Are we together? So for me, I was very excited when I saw the theme. Now the truth is that you may have learned, you will be seated shortly. There's a reason why I want you to stand. We have, as recorded right now, Pastor, about 4,000 registered religions in the world. Not less than 4,000. Registered faith practices of any kind and every kind. And every one of these faith practices is advocating superior wisdom, advocating connection to a deity. Are we together? advocating love, advocating peace, advocating territorial transformation. They have their creeds and their advocacies. And until now, most of these sects and these religions, they did not have room for expression because there was no access to internet. Today, when you talk to your son about Jesus, he will tell you it depends on which one you are talking about because there are many who are available. Are we together now? And so there is need for a, redific a, a redefinition of the foundational truths that make a Christian a Christian. And if we lose this, the purposes of the kingdom will be at risk. So for me, I see this theme, Jesus, as a restorative effort by the Spirit that believers be grounded again. Now, the truth is, from a, a faith standpoint even among believers we may differ here and there there may be differences based on revelation but there are certain things if you do not know you are not a Christian there are certain things if you do not believe you are not a Christian there are certain things if you do not uphold you are not a Christian and so for me the theme Jesus is like it brings together everything that represents the pillar the anchor of the christian faith do you agree with me on that and i believe that through all of the sessions that you have enjoyed several servants of god in worship and word have brought several perspectives and so in praying for my session tonight i thought to just communicate and zoom down on a particular aspect of this teaching and that's going to be our discussion for tonight i asked us to pray earlier on that god will give us an encounter that produces profit to our christian life not every encounter translates to profit hallelujah is it all right if i ask you to pray one more time jesus reveal yourself to me something about your life your grace your power in a way that profits my christian experience in a way that brings validation to my knowing you please pray a man of god is praying a young man is praying a young woman is praying someone in ministry is praying a businessman is praying a revelation of jesus that translates to the profit of my destiny a profit of my spiritual life
Hallelujah. In Jesus' name we pray. Please, you may be seated. Blessed be the name of the Lord. So, let's start with Philippians chapter 3 and verse 10. This is Paul speaking to the church in Philippi 3 and verse 10. Let's chorus it together if we can see it projected. Ready? One to read. That I may know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his sufferings being made conformable unto his death. One last time. That I may know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his sufferings being made conformable. John 17, 3. Jesus is praying now. John 17 and verse 3. He said, And this is life eternal, that they may know thee, the only true God, and Jesus Christ whom thou hast sent. This is life eternal, that they may know thee, the only true God, and Jesus Christ whom thou hast sent. Like I said, there are many things to know about Jesus. Time will not give us the luxury to explore everything that the believer needs to know about Jesus. But generally for you to understand that the stability of your Christian experience, the stability of your Christian experience depends on your accurate knowledge of Jesus. The stability of your Christian experience depends on your accurate knowledge of the person Jesus. You can know about healing. You can know about anointing. You can know about church growth. Is that Choma Jesus? Blessings of grace. Let's give her a big hand clap. I just, I was looking and I was saying, God bless you, ma'am. Please be seated. God bless you. So good to see you. How did I miss your session? Have you, have you, have you ministered yet? Ah, okay. Are we together? Praise the name of the Lord. That means you have some dancing and praising. The devil is in trouble today. Hallelujah. This woman is full of fire. Amen and amen. So the stability of your Christian experience depends on your knowledge of Jesus. Now, the truth is that you can know many important aspects of the Christian faith like breakthrough, like healing, are we together? Like counseling, like um, whatever it is. But if any dimension of knowledge you have is greater than the knowledge of Jesus, you will still be limited in your work. There are many people who know about healing. Nothing wrong with that. There are many people who know about prosperity. There are many people who know about breakthrough. There are many people who know about church growth. There are many people who know the dynamics of church administration and these things are profitable but if it is at the risk of your knowledge of Jesus then your Christian experience will be found wanting eventually are we together? the pivot, the, the stability of the believer in this kingdom is not just derived from your union with church, your union with a pastor, your union with a bible, are we together? your union with a Christian song you must have a personal revelation of Jesus Christ. This becomes the anchor that provides stability. The reason why I'm saying this is because everything you know will be tested eventually. And if you do not have a personal knowledge of Jesus and a thorough one at that, eventually you will find reasons to fall by the wayside. Our world today is full of people who have been in the faith, respectfully, even in ministry for many years. And to the shock of creation, some of them stood after 10, 20 years and said, you know what? I don't believe this again. I've been lying to you for 10 years. I've been doing ministry. I planted churches advocating a man I do not know. And after 20, 30 years, they tell you I'm not interested in Jesus again. I have been walking in a lie. We need to be grounded and stable. Are we together? 
And so my focus for our teaching tonight will be the mission of Jesus. But generally speaking, to let you know that it is important we know who Jesus is as a person. Who is he? When you hear the name Jesus, who is he? Because remember that he asked the disciples that question too. Who do men say that I, the son of man, who do they say that I am? And the disciples haven't walked with Jesus for a long time. They were confused themselves. They said, thank you for bringing this question because we ourselves, we don't even know who you are. Some say you are a prophet. Some say you are Elijah reincarnated. Some say you are this and that and that. And Jesus looked at them and said, okay, so what is your verdict about me? You have enjoyed proximity. You have watched me work miracles. You've watched me on crusade grounds. What is your verdict? And he was shocked that those who were closest to him did not know who he was. So proximity does not automatically bring revelation. You can be in church. You can be given church activities and you will be surprised that you do not know who Jesus is. It was Peter who spoke and says, I know, not we know. I know who thou art. He said, thou art Christ, the son of the living God. And then he says, Simon by Jonah, he says, thou art flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my father, which is in heaven. And he says, upon this rock, this revelation, I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail. Are we still together? So it's important for us to know who Jesus is. I don't have the time to read for you the list. The wisest way to know Jesus is to study what he said about himself. Generally, from a theological standpoint, the wisest way to know about a man is to let that man do an introduction for you about himself. Am I right on that? There are no rumors when a man talks about himself. Are we together? There's no confusion when you give someone an opportunity to introduce himself. So if you're doubting whether my name is Joshua or Selman, you ask me. That is the safest way to know. What is your name? Then if I tell you, you take it from the horse's mouth. And that becomes the basis of your confidence. Are we together? So I have found in my personal work with God that the greatest way to learn Jesus is to study everything he said about himself. And there are 12 things. 12 expressions and we may not have the time there running through the gospels down to revelation that jesus said about himself because i'm passing this introduction i'll just introduce one mark chapter one and verse one mark chapter one and verse one the beginning of the gospel of jesus christ help me please the son of god one more time the beginning of the gospel of jesus christ the son of God. John 20 and verse 31. So Jesus is the son of God. Among the many definitions that are connected to his name and his personhood is that he's the son of God. In fact, when we back down to verse 30, John 20, 30 says, many other miracles did Jesus in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book. The next verse says, but these are written that ye might believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that in believing, you will have life through his name. Are we together? Jesus Christ, the Son of God. But that's not the only thing he said about himself. Let me tell you a few things he said. You may not write, just listen for your learning. Jesus called himself the way, the truth, and life by himself. He called himself the door. He called himself, um, what else did he say about himself? The light of the world, in fact. He said that about himself. Are we together now? He called himself the resurrection and the life. There are seven of them that he said in the gospel. And you find others in Revelation. I am Alpha and Omega. I am the beginning and the end. These are things he said about himself. So in learning Jesus... You diminish third-party definitions and focus on what Jesus had to say about himself. Are we together? Because the Bible tells us in revealing Jesus that when he revealed himself, he was full of grace and truth. So we trust everything he said about himself. Are we learning now? The average believer needs to understand 
who Jesus said he was and who he is. Because for every definition of his personhood, there would be the relevance of it in your life. For instance, if Jesus calls himself the way, the truth, and life, he's not just saying, I am the way and the truth and the life. It is a pathway to knowing God. It starts with the way. Then the way leads you to the truth. The truth there being reality, not just an information. And that the end of it is that you find life. So the goal is life, but it does not start as life. It starts by you finding the way. The way out of every confusion, then it brings you to the truth. And then eventually, you walk in the reality of life. Are we together? This is very important. If you know Jesus as the resurrection and the life, then it is possible to enjoy divine healing. When you are praying for someone whose organ is damaged, there is a revelation of Jesus that sponsors that confidence. You are not just anointing conscious. You are coming in the name of the resurrection and the life. That even though he be dead, he can be made alive. Are we together now? When Jesus calls himself the door, it means there is a way out of everything. A door is an access point that connects anywhere and anywhere. The rooms in your house are separated by doors. That means if I find myself in any kind of confusion in life and destiny, there is Jesus the door that he comes with his wisdom to show me a way. That revelation can set you up as a leader, set you up as a corporate person to do exploits in the kingdom. Jesus said, I am the vine. That means we are called to the ministry of fruitfulness. I am the vine and ye are the branches. Is that true? John 15, that every branch that abides in me bears fruit. That means my life should be fruitful because I'm connected to him. He is the vine. I am the branch. What is the branch in agriculture? The fruit bearing part of the vine. Are we learning now? But like I said, my focus is not on the personhood of Jesus. I'm sure that you may have had teachings along that line. Let's discuss his mission. What was his mission? Why did Jesus come to the earth? As the son of God, why did he have to become a man to walk through the earth 33 and a half years? Why did he have to do that? You know, for many years, I studied salvation and redemption. And I've been intrigued as to why God, as mighty as he is, did not cast sin out of man. The all-powerful God, you would think that he had the power and authority and he could speak to every man. As powerful as God is, his strategy for redeeming man was not casting sin out of man. He had to come, become a man. He died even the death on the cross, the Bible tells us. Are we together? Yes. What was his mission? There are other things to study too. Like did he succeed? Do you know, many believers are weak in their conviction because they are not yet sure that Jesus actually succeeded in his assignment. The proof that he succeeded was the resurrection and his enthronement. And Paul said that I may know him. Now you understand what he's saying? Not just to know his person, but there is more to know. The power of his resurrection. There is something about his resurrection and the victory, the implication. That if he rose, I can rise. Not just in the sweet by and by. I can rise from any confusion I can rise from any limitation. I can rise from any kind of limitation that has come with my background. You believe this? Shout amen. amen. Write this please. Jesus came to the world for three principal assignments. His mission is threefold essentially. And it's important for every believer to know and understand this. That Jesus, his coming was threefold. The coming of Jesus as Messiah was for a threefold assignment. Are you ready? Number one, the first assignment of Jesus in coming to the earth was to be an accurate revelation and manifestation of the misunderstood God. His first assignment on earth was not just to die. No. 
his first assignment was to come as a correction of our understanding about God. Because until Jesus manifested there were a plethora of confusion as to who God was. I hope you know that before Jesus came and gave us life, there was no possibility for a personal walk with God as we call it. He called individuals and showed them bits and pieces of himself for the sake of the revelation to those they led. But nobody had the privilege through the spirit of indefinite intimacy with God. Until Jesus came, the nation of Israel and all the people in the then world had to depend on the revelation of priests and prophets. Whatever they told them God was, that's what they believed. Are we following now? And I hope you know that the prophets and the priests were men. And they too were limited in their understanding of God. So when you read the Old Testament, you will see many controversial expressions of God. This is what Jesus came to correct. There are many statements about God that came from the lips of prophets, that came from the lips of priests, that were a limitation to their own understanding about God. So, the practice in those days, the then world, um, the thin line between the practice of extra, extra biblical practices like witchcraft and other kinds of things, it was very close to the practice of the faith. And so you would find prophets intertwined between the practice of divination, are we together? And then an encounter with the authentic God. And their revelation came out of their limitations about God. So there were things they said about God that we have a right to probe today using the reference Jesus. For instance, you will read in the Bible that a lying spirit came out of the Lord. You see that now? That is inconsistent with the character of God as revealed in Jesus. The Bible tells us that when Jesus came, he was full of grace and truth. He came as a validation to the fact that God is not a man that he should lie, nor the son of man that he should repent. We do not find that in Jesus. That means something was wrong with the revelation that the prophets gave. Are we together? Because if you use the lens of the prophets and the priests alone to know God, you would not know him accurately. There were many things that they said, sincerely so, that have deviated many people. It does not give a picture of a God who is consistent. The vacillations of the prophets became a wrong vista for learning God. So you find out that when you read the Bible without the assistance of Jesus being revealed, there are many troubles you have in your heart. You may not have the courage to ask it because you don't want to sin against God. Like many believers have kept these things. You mean God does this? But when Jesus came, he came as a validation to the claims of God. He came as a marking script so that we will correct everything they had told us about God. So when, whatever the Bible says God is, we have a right to probe it until we find it in the life of Jesus. Is someone learning now? For instance, the Bible says the Lord is gracious and compassionate. He is slow to anger and rich in love. Alright? Let's go to Jesus. Did we see him demonstrating that quality? Because he came as God incarnate. Based on that marking script, we know that that scripture is correct. That expression is correct. Are we together? He says, I have loved you with an everlasting love. And with my loving kindness, I have drawn you. We have a right to doubt God's love. Especially in light of our word. Let's go to Jesus. Do we see the love of God revealed in Jesus? The woman at the well. The madman in Gadara, let the little children come to me. Do not forbid them for, for such is the kingdom. So based on the revelation of Jesus, we can say it is true that God is love. Are we together? The Bible says, calls him the only wise God. Do we see his wisdom displayed in Jesus? They brought a woman who was caught in adultery, the Bible says, in the very act of it. The goal was not to reveal the adultery, it was to trap Jesus down. And they said, now, tell us, you claim to be a prophet. You can't find the other prophets. This woman was caught in the very act. And Jesus kept quiet. And he kept writing. And he said, whoever does not have sin among you should cast the first stone. Wisdom. The wisdom of God made manifest. Are we learning now? The Bible tells us 
All power belongs to God. All right? Let's go to Jesus. Do we see a display of power? What manner of man is this? That even the winds and the waves obey him. Lazarus, come forth. Do you not see the manifestations of power? So the first assignment of Jesus, I hope we're still together, that he came as a correction to our understanding of the misunderstood God. You will never truly know God till you study Jesus. You will never truly know God until you study Jesus. Hebrews chapter 1. Please give us from verse 1 to 3. I hope somebody's learning. Blessed be the name of the Lord. God, who in sundry times, the Bible says, and in diverse manners. Are you seeing how he spake to us? He spake unto the fathers. How? By the prophets. Next verse. Had in this last day spoken to us by his son, whom he had appointed heir of all things, by whom he also made the world. Verse 3. The Bible says, who being the brightness of his glory, and the express image of his person. So he came as God incarnate, Emmanuel, God with us. God with us, carrying mortal flesh, walking with us. Everything that God is, Jesus manifested in his earth work. So everything that was not captured in the ministry of Jesus and has now been credited to God, we have a right to, to check it carefully because revelation is progressive Paul helped us with that understanding in 1 Corinthians 13 he said we see in part and we prophesy in part even if you are a prophet even if you are a priest we see in part I imagine right now that if Isaiah were to come alive again if Jeremiah were to come alive again in light of the abundant realities that the life of Jesus has provided many of them will weep and say my God I am so sorry I credited this and that to God not knowing that it was just my mind or my limitations you stand the risk of a confusing Christian life till you limit your work to be modeled after Christ did you get that? If you model your life just after a man of God, you will be disappointed eventually. If you model your life just after a church, you will be disappointed eventually. That is the truth. If you model your life just after any other thing aside from Christ, you will find dense eventually because Jesus came as the perfect reflection of the Father. While there are models that you can learn from, you only follow men to the degree to which they follow Christ. Is someone learning now? This is very powerful. So Jesus came as an accurate revelation of the misunderstood God. He will teach you how to serve God in an effective way. He will teach you how to know God in an effective way. Why do we pray? not just because of the blessings of prayer jesus prayed and he said as my father sent me so i sent you jesus prayed jesus loved jesus rested why is it that you don't point accusing fingers at people when they cry and say you don't have faith because there is a scripture that gives you a consolation john eleven thirty five. 35 jesus wept it is not unspiritual to weep there are times that men can weep you can be overwhelmed are we together now So the second assignment of Jesus very quickly what brought him to the earth to reconcile men back to God to reconcile men back to God and make the life of God accessible to men to reconcile men back to God this is powerful and in addition to that reconciliation to make the life of God available and accessible to men this is his second mission what you call eternal life the zoe life everlasting life he came to bring reconciliation between men and god romans chapter 5 romans 5 and verse 10 please let's look at a few scriptures the bible says for if when we were enemies were reconciled to god by the death of his son much more 
being reconciled, we shall be saved by his life. He came as a bridge to reconcile us to God. Second Corinthians. Ephesians chapter 2. Let's look at Ephesians chapter 2. Ephesians chapter 2. From verse 14 to 16. Then we'll look at Second Corinthians 5. 18 to 19. Ephesians chapter 2. For he is our peace. Somebody say hallelujah. For he is our peace. Who had made both one. And had broken the middle wall of partition between us 15. And having abolished in his flesh the enmity. Even the law of commandments contained in ordinances. For to make himself of twain one new man. Making peace. Verse 16. The Bible says that he might reconcile both. Both the Jews and the Gentiles. Unto God in one body by the cross. Having slain the enmity thereby. The ministry of reconciliation. Let's try 2 Corinthians 5. 18 and 19. 2 Corinthians chapter 5. All things are of God. Read with me. Verse 18 and I finish 19 myself. Ready? One to read. All things are of God. Uh -huh. Who had reconciled us to himself by Jesus Christ and had given us. Verse 19. It says to wit that God was in Christ. Who was in Christ? God was in Christ reconciling the world to himself not imputing their trespasses unto them and have committed unto us the word of reconciliation the second assignment of Jesus he came to reconcile men do you know this is the gospel the gospel is not about pointing to men their limitations the gospel is letting them know that what they could not do for themselves the mercy of God has come within their reach are we together it's important every believer understands what the gospel is in fact give us first corinthians 15 first corinthians 15 from verse 1 first corinthians 15 please moreover don't forget this brethren i declare unto you the gospel if you're a man of god here please with all due respect pay attention to this if you do not know this you are not in ministry the gospel which i preach unto you which also ye have received help me and wherein ye stand what is the gospel verse 2 it says by which ye are saved if ye keep in memory what i preach unto you unless you have believed in vain three for i delivered unto you first of all that which i also received what did I receive? How that Christ died for your sins according to the scripture. Verse 4, he was buried and he rose again on the third day according to the scripture. This is the basis of that reconciliation. That the Bible says the wages of sin is death and that the soul that sinned it shall die is a law is part of god's justice system but that god said i do not desire that any man should perish and to honor that desire he sent jesus who came and brought the entire creation in covenant with him and died the death i hope you know that everything jesus received at resurrection he always had at god as god but the only problem is that he had it alone he wanted you to be a part of it. So he relinquished everything. It's like someone having a PhD alone. But now wanting you to also have that PhD with him. So he relinquishes the PhD. And he goes to start nursery class again. By the time he's about to get PhD, he enters a covenant with you. So that as they are presenting it to him, you are seeing a PhD and you are saying, where did this come from? That is the gift of God. Do you understand this now? Jesus came to reconcile us. And the Bible says he's given us the ministry of reconciliation. It is impossible, ladies and gentlemen, to access the life of God if you do not have peace with God. John chapter 3 and verse 16. He says, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever, whosoever believeth on him should not perish but have everlasting life everlasting life 
verse 17 says for god did not send his son into the world to condemn the world but that the world through him might be saved the world through him might be saved my life changed when the spirit of god asked me to change the name i call sinners i don't call sinners sinners i call them the harvest the moment you call sinners sinners what you feel towards them is resentment not compassion immediately it puts you in a state of self-righteousness all you see is their limitations but when you call them the harvest immediately you become one of the laborers and you are conscious of your sickle here's what jesus said truly the harvest is plentiful huh there needs to be a redefinition to our perception of the dying world that when you see a gentleman who cannot help himself a young lady who cannot help themselves for as long as what you are seeing is a sinner you will stand with self-righteousness and pity them but the moment you see them as sheep without a shepherd the moment you see them as a harvest you now begin to think like jesus jesus stood and wept over jerusalem and he said oh jerusalem jerusalem if only you had known in this thy time the things that pertain unto your peace he says but now they are hidden from you it literally changed my outlook about people when i see people in limitation and decadence the first thing that happens is compassion how do i reach out to these people there is a new and a living way there is a way out of this for a family for an individual that way you become like jesus the harvest the harvest mama when you look at your stubborn child as the harvest it will not be anger again it will be the compassion of jesus through a mother how do i see that my son is saved in my lifetime if you look at your classmates who are in decadence as the harvest the ministry of condemnation does not produce profit it's been proven in scripture it's been proven through history when you see people as the harvest you don't tolerate licentiousness but it helps you know that every sinner is that way because they could not help themselves the ministry of reconciliation are we together he met the woman at the well the bible says she had five husbands and the one currently with her john 4 you find it there was not even her husband and jesus came to her and as he began to talk madam give me water and she said who are you i'm a stranger what is all this one now and then when they began to talk the woman perceived he was a prophet and she started asking him questions of worship at the end of that discussion you know what happened the bible says her priorities shifted immediately she left the fetcher she left everything and ran and called people and said come see a man that told me everything i done the man came because her weakness was compelling Jesus did not come to the world just to show man how sinful man was he came as a living way to say no matter how stained how rotten you are I have been sent to demonstrate the love of Jesus this is powerful I tell you why our missions are not effective because we are about sinners not harvest so we stand as self-righteous people this stubborn son i hear you are not you better repent and we say that from a standpoint as though we had the power to save ourselves let me tell you one truth everyone is a product of god's mercy and grace never forget this he said in iniquity did my mother conceive me when you have that it plants compassion the reason why we forget to make altar calls is not forgetfulness it's lack of revelation there is no passion that sponsors it it was never supposed to be mechanical it was supposed to be as a result of the abundant realization that his love reached out to me how can i end the service without giving another person an opportunity to enjoy that reconciliation that i had 
You cannot tell people go and win souls mechanically. You give them the revelation of the love of Jesus as expressed in his substitutionary sacrifice. When you truly understand that, you will never watch sinners move around or the harvest as we call it, the world of unbelievers. You are looking for an opportunity to sell Jesus to them. Are we learning? Jesus came to reconcile the world. Look at me. Is there anyone on earth today that is beyond the reach of God's mercy and love? No. But I hope you know there are people because the way they have because of the way they have hurt you. You want as a punishment that they die in sin. If you ever see them in church, you say, God, how did this person find his way to church? No way. And it's even Baba Deboe who is preaching. My God, that means this man is going to be saved. How does this enemy of mine, this Paul, you are in church. The woman at the well, you are in church. What are you doing in church? And then the altar call comes and they come. And you are watching the hands of Jesus. And he's still stretched towards them. And he said, Jesus, you are joking. Even this one, this is how far he can go. I have loved you with an everlasting love. Let me tell you, before Jesus returns, bar, we are going to see a kind of harvest. A spectacular manifestation of harvest. Are we together? Oh, yes. Help that gentleman under the anointing there, please. A harvest. Some of the people we thought God would never reach. You will be surprised to see that they will become the merchants of the gospel before he returns. Ah, be careful when you judge the woman who was once a harlot because Jesus is still interested in her. Be careful when you judge the madman in Gadara. There is still an evangelist in that man. Be careful when you see Saul receiving letters and brewing threats against the church. There are many evangelists today who are in beer palace. There are many evangelists today roaming around. But they are depending on the witness of Christ through us. But I can tell you this. Before Jesus returns, you will see a harvest that will surprise you. That in the lifetime of many people today who were captains of the persecution of the church. That kind of grace that came upon Paul, Saul and turned him to Paul is still on earth. The spirit of God is still fishing men. There are many people today you think they are not saved. But it's just because they are afraid of what will happen. Unbelievers from other faiths, secretly, like Nicodemus, they are busy discussing with Jesus. They are already one step to the kingdom. By this teaching, if you are here and God has given you the burden for prophetic intercession, the first assignment of intercession is to pray for the Lord of the harvest, not to pray for things. The intercessory ministry is connected to world missions, not just acquisition of things. He said the harvest is wide, but the laborers are few. Your prayer request as an intercessor is to pray for laborers. 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 Laborers laborers are we together can i tell you until you are about the ministry of reconciliation praying for anointing will be a waste the purpose of the anointing is to help you to be empowered to produce enough witness give us acts chapter 4 please and verse 33 is god speaking to someone tonight there are many people who are praying for anointing and empowerment there is no need to pray for it if your heart is not connected to the gospel and with great power gave the apostles witness of what the resurrection of the Lord Jesus and great grace was upon them I will tell you why you see men like our father Baba Deboe very powerful it is because of their heart their heart for the lost their heart for missions 
So whatever grace needs to be invested upon their lives to make that harvest possible. You want to see power? Don't just pray and fast because you want a name. Connect your desire to the harvest and you will see a move of the spirit in your life in a way you have never seen. I know what I'm saying. Take it down for me, please. Ask and now give the nations to you, O oh Lord. That's the cry of my heart. Distant shores and the islands will see your light as it rises on us. Ask and now give the nations to Oh Lord, that's the cry of my heart. Distant shores and the islands will see your light as it rises on us. Oh Lord, we ask for the nations. All of the confusions in the body of Christ will be minimized if our focus shifts from ourselves and our churches to the work of the missions we can argue all we can among ourselves it has no profit into the kingdom until we take our gaze away from our reputations and focus on this reconciliatory ministry you see that now lord i'm praying for power so that souls will be saved I'm trusting you to make me a kingdom billionaire because I want to see that crusades are held unhindered. We have a conference coming up in the US next month and in Canada. And I can tell you these are multi-million conferences. That is the price of winning the lost. So there are people praying for money. Oh God, take money. You even drop money like a bribe and God says, I'm not stupid. If your heart is not connected to missions, you are wasting your time. Did you hear what I'm saying? This is the correct understanding of prosperity that you connect the desire to prosper primarily to the work of the kingdom. You don't need so much to be comfortable. But when it has to do with lifting the name of Jesus, I told you the name of Jesus is heavy. It takes resources to lift it high. Why do you desire the anointing? I have colleagues and they are all anointed. Let them not think my fasting and prayer has been wasted. That motif is already corrupted. If you like, do 40 days, it will not produce any results. But that you are saying, Lord, I need to give witness to the gospel. It is important that men see the evidence that Jesus saves, that he heals, that he delivers. And this is the premise upon which I seek the investment of the spirit upon my life. And God will put something upon your life that the nations will thank God for. Hallelujah. Is somebody learning? This is why Jesus came. Remember again, reason number one, he came as a correction of our perception about the unknown God. As proposed to us by prophets and priests who knew God in types and shadows, he now came as an accurate revelation of God. Number two, he came to give us access to the life of God by reconciling us to God by reconciling us to God and he's able to save to the uttermost he said for this promise is unto you Acts chapter 2 and to your children to your children's children can I tell you the truth you may not have the privilege to do evangelism at a global scale like Baba Deboye or like Reinhard Bonke of blessed memory but in your lifetime somebody close to you should experience the healing power should experience the mercy of Jesus the grace that comes with knowing Jesus there is a narrative about evangelism and praying that God will correct in our lives before he returns our assignment is not to mobilize people and step back and one evangelist comes on stage you will weary every evangelist available there are eight billion people and counting on earth and christianity has recorded now 
generally speaking, statistically speaking, only has about 2.6 billion people. Ladies and gentlemen, we are saying Jesus is returning soon and we've not done a good job in covering that ground. You know why? The laborers are few. Sometimes we have worshipped the laborer and burdened them. I just returned from Lagos Street to come here and tomorrow I'm back again. Thank God for the efficiency but Joshua Selman alone cannot get God's program done. That's the reason why God is putting conferences like this. To reveal Jesus and to recruit more people. To say there's more space. Don't say there are too many men of God. There are too many churches. The harvest is wide. And the laborers are few. God is still saying the laborers are few. The laborers are few. I will tell you the reason why when there's trouble on one person in the body, it affects everyone because there are few people. And if Satan strikes one person, there needs to be so many people. You also ease the burden on the few. Celebrity Christianity was not God's part of, part of God's goal. Everyone was designed by God to be a manifestation of the glory of God. I can tell you why many men of God are burdened now. They are doing their assignments and the assignments of other careless people who have not yet manifested. So they are, they are midwifing the project of others before they go through their training and stand on their place. Oh God, we ask for the nation. We ask for the nations. Hallelujah. Sometimes as I travel, I can get so tired. And as I rest my head while traveling, I'm thinking to myself, what is all this about? That you spend your life and you are spent for the king. Is it looking for a name? Are there not cheaper ways to make a name? Technology has afforded an opportunity to be global while you are remote. Is it really about a name? Is it really about fame? Then I remember that there is a cry in the heart of the Father. I remember that Jesus came and spent his life until he died. And that if he could do that for me, then I can spend my life serving his purposes. For me to live is Christ, honestly. It's not a scripture. And if I die in the process, it's with joy and gain. Because I have defeated this life and I have secured my place with God. You see, the reason why people are not saved is because of what we are preaching. There is a content that leads to salvation. And if that, it is not every part, not everything you believe about Jesus that translates to salvation. If you believe in Jesus as a prophet, that is true. But that is not what is connected to salvation. There is an exact body of knowledge. Are we together? I hope you are getting challenged. Church is quiet. It's a solemn assembly. It's the word entering your spirit. Number three, the third reason why Jesus walked upon the earth was as a model of God's expectation for man. Write this down. So in addition to coming to correct our understanding, in addition to bringing reconciliation and granting us access to the life of God, the third reason, and this one concerns you now, the third reason why Jesus came as he came as a pattern man as a model of God's expectation for the believer that means this is what God expects from a Christian both in terms of the strength of witness and the display of your godly character Jesus is that model the Bible says looking on to Jesus he calls him the author and the finisher of our faith are we together Jesus came as a pattern man what is a pattern the model by which you use for reproduction are we together now so if i want to reproduce the champions cathedral all i need to do i don't have to carry this building on my head and take it down to abuja all i need to do is to meet pastor and say please can you grant me access to the architect or the plan if i have the architectural um, um, 
the architectural record of this building. I can reproduce this building so verbatim that if you were blinded and taken to Abuja, you would think you are still here. That's the power of patterns. He came as a pattern man to show us how to live victoriously, to show us how to live profitably, how to do ministry in a way that wins. Are we together now? So the Bible says, looking unto Jesus, he calls him the author, the finisher of our faith. Jesus came as a revelation of God's expectation for man. John chapter 14 and verse 12. Please give it to us. John 14 and verse 12. John 14 and verse 12. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believeth on me, the works that I do, he shall also do. There is an implication to believing in Jesus that the works that I do, he shall also do. And greater works than this shall he do because I go to my father. Do you believe that? The Bible tells us, we read it earlier in 1 Corinthians chapter, 2 Corinthians 5, from verse 18 and 19 that we were given the ministry of reconciliation and we were given the word of reconciliation verse 19 that means god has an expectation that in knowing jesus you know who you are did you get that in knowing jesus and in learning jesus you will know who you are it is impossible to know your true identity and your life's purpose until you know jesus because he came as a pattern man he came as a pattern man. You want to find a pattern for effective evangelism? Look at Jesus. Effective leadership? Look at Jesus. Are we together now? Effective witness? Look at Jesus. How to transform men? Look at Jesus. There were many other people who transformed people in the Bible. But the most accurate pattern for salvation, for redemption, for healing, the most accurate pattern for dealing with government is Jesus. One time they came and met him and they wanted to embarrass him. And they said, you claim to be a preacher of righteousness and you are still owing in your taxes. He showed us how to respond to powers that be. He said, don't argue. Give to Caesar. There are things that belong to Caesar. So while you are preaching the gospel, make sure you have Caesar's coin because he will come for it. Give to Caesar what belongs to Caesar and to God what belongs to God. That is the pattern for being a peacemaker on earth. To give what belongs to Caesar. Give it to him. And then give that which belongs to God to God. Are we together? A model for effective living. If your life and my life continues to be ineffective is because we have not understood the mission of Jesus. Let me say this before we pray. When you encounter Jesus among the many blessings that you receive, listen carefully please, there are four of them principally that follow your encounter with Jesus. Number one, the first blessing that comes to the believer upon encountering Jesus, the son of the living God, is access to eternal life. We call it salvation from sin. But in addition to salvation from sin, you receive the life of God. Write that down, please. The first blessing that comes upon every believer upon encountering Jesus, the Jesus of the Bible, is that you have access to Zoe, the life of God. You are not just free from sin. You are not just forgiven of your sin. Are we together now? Yes. Because you see, sin is a major problem, but it was not the only problem that brought Jesus to save man. If sin went away and we did not have the life of God, we're still in trouble. The sin problem was a major problem to be dealt with, but there were other things. The grave, death, Satan. Before sin came, Satan was already there. Are we together now? So he came to do a thorough job, not just to forgive us of sin, but to upgrade us. The Bible says that. That we've been exalted, seated with Christ. Ephesians 2. 
when you encounter Jesus Christ you receive salvation but in addition to that you receive the life of God everyone say the life of God shout it one more time say the life of God the life of God is beyond life after death is victory and dominion over death are we together the life of God is not what you receive or what is manifested after you die. No. The word eternal life um, is not a very accurate expression in defining that kind of life. Because in truth, everyone has eternal life. There are people who die without Christ. They are not living in the body, but they are still alive. As revealed in the story of Lazarus and the rich man. Cessation of living does not stop. Whether you are with Jesus or you are with Satan. When we preach to people, we tell them, where do you want to spend eternity? Not will you. You will. The problem is location. Are we together now? So what Jesus came to give us is not the ability to live after now. All men have it. It is the reason why when men are judged, they will still be alive and be gathered together. What he came to give us was a quality of life life indestructible god's very life not the kind the very life of god the very life of god is what he gave us not the kind of life his very life that's what he gave us do you believe that it is a life of victory indomitable unquestionable dominion that comes on account of that life many believers have been saved but they do not understand what they received. So the riches that is invested in that life cannot find expression. No wonder the Bible says an heir for as long as he's a child. That he differeth not from a slave even though he be lord of all. There are many believers who purport to have received the life of God. They have confessed the lordship of Jesus. But our lives are still weak and beggarly. We do not bring credence to the victory of Christ through our lives. We are still victims of elemental forces. Victims of the things that tie on believers. The difference is seldom clear. The reason is because we do not have an understanding of the kind and the quality of life that he gave us. Hallelujah. He gave us more than forgiveness of sin. He gave us life. Life victorious. Life indestructible. My God, that no matter how weak and limited I am, upon confessing Jesus like a few people will be doing shortly after now, that you come as frail as you are and in that moment of confession a miracle is happening in the realm of the spirit you may not feel it you may not look like it but there is a translation from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of god's dear son in addition to that there is an imputation of the life of god it's not just his righteousness you receive the life of god now whether or not you will be able to manifest the riches of that life. That is knowledge dependent. That is the reason why the Bible says that God desires that all men be saved. Then to come unto the knowledge of the truth. Because the riches of the life of God we have, we have received is activated and expressed in the presence of light. Are we learning? When you encounter Jesus Christ, you receive the life of God. Number two, when you encounter Jesus Christ, the second blessing that you receive is called peace. Ah, peace. It sounds very simple. For some, it sounds very feminine. It's not charismatic. But may you grow old enough and then lack peace you will know the value of peace there are people who will give up their estates and their businesses for peace in my definition and my estimation the highest definition of success is peace not progress i will choose peace a thousand times to progress when people die we do not say rest in progress rest in even at death they desire peace hallelujah Philippians chapter 4 and verse 7, please. Philippians chapter 4 and verse 7. Please take it high for me. And the peace of God. Someone say the peace of God. There is such a thing as the peace of God. The one he gives. 
he said which passeth all understanding it shall keep your hearts and mind how through christ jesus let me tell you what peace is the ability to be unperturbed unshaken by life and its vicissitudes the believer is such a superior breed you can sit in the midst of fire and say glory be to god and people do not understand your confidence are you aware that tomorrow you are going to jail if you cannot pay the rent i will do my best but glory be to god he makes me to lie down in still waters what kind of a person are you don't you fear are you not worried maybe you may die as you travel for me to live is christ and i will continue to engage the principles that make for life but even if i die it is in victory not out of fear peace most people today do you know why medical machines cannot diagnose certain sicknesses because they are spiritual the bible says a broken spirit can dry the bones that means the problem can be from the realm of the spirit and it will appear in your health and you sit under a machine it cannot tell why you are sick because you like you lack peace there are drugs today that try to replace the holy spirit and medicine is doing its best but it just cannot give you peace Someone say peace. Peace. Hmm. peace. peace. Our world is full of trouble. All you need to do is switch on your television in the morning. Nigeria, we need peace. Say amen. amen. Peace. That your child cannot leave in the morning and you are not sure whether he will return back. And your heart is palpitating as a parent lord keep my child for me let him come back first let him come back home then number two let him come back still a christian say peace let me tell you there are too many troubles in this life that will shred your heart to pieces if you do not embrace the peace of god for someone you came to church here with so much turbulence it used to be that it's people in their 50s who would have high blood pressure right now teenagers are having high blood pressure because of worry about tomorrow worry about so many things the bible says which of you by worrying can add a cubit somebody say myself find peace, find peace. say it again say myself find peace yes sir find peace there's the rent issue but find peace i will survive it he make me to walk listen let me tell you god can cause a man to walk in his high places businessmen find peace i know that it looks like your business is going down there are people who collapse after covid till today they have not recovered peace is therapeutic it's not just spiritual it is therapeutic you do ministry without peace you would depress yourself to death someone say peace Number three, the third blessing we receive on account of salvation is joy. Joy unspeakable and full of glory. Acts chapter 8, 5 to 7. Let's wrap up. Acts chapter 8. Philip went down to the city of Samaria and preached Christ unto them. The Bible says the people with one accord gave heed to those things which Philip spake, hearing and seeing the miracles which he did for unclean spirits crying with a loud voice came out of many that were possessed with them and many that were taken with palsies and were lame were healed verse 8 the bible says and there was joy there was not just healing there was not just salvation there was joy in that city psalm 51 verse 12 there was joy in that city he says restore unto me the psalmist was crying the joy of thy salvation your salvation to me comes with joy you can receive the salvation and reject the joy restore to me the joy of thy salvation are we learning the joy of thy salvation nehemiah chapter 8 and verse 10 many of you know the scripture but you don't know where it is found here it is neither be ye sorry for the joy of the lord is your strength the joy of the lord can be a strength for an individual that in this world of sadness and turbulence the revelation of jesus and the blessings of that revelation can bring joy joy is different from happiness like you have learned happiness is circumstantial 
you are happy after a promotion you are happy when you make progress but joy is a spiritual affair an unbeliever cannot really have joy we mistaken it but joy is always of the lord joy is always of the spirit are we together now that you find yourself rejoicing rejoice in the lord not in your situation good or bad rejoice in the lord and again i say rejoice someone say rejoice. rejoice not the name of a person what god wants you to be and do rejoice 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 in this sad world you get up in the morning and you say father thank you father thank you i'm happy that choma jesus is here i'm sure after i'm done she's going to come and shake sadness out of everybody here in the name of jesus the son of the living god that you will rejoice in the lord until you remind the devil that when jesus died and said it is finished he meant it the victory of christ is true is real and is established the bible says with joy shall we draw from the wells of salvation with joy shall we draw from the wells of salvation let me minister to you remain joyful regardless what happens to your life are we together remain joyful i've made up my mind as a choice that you will not find me in gloominess at, no 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 rejoice in the lord the final blessing number one eternal life number two peace number three joy number four purpose and meaning the fourth blessing you receive when you encounter Jesus, in addition to eternal life, in addition to joy, in addition to peace, is purpose. Acts chapter 1 verse 8. It was on account of their encounter with Jesus, a mandate was given to them. If they did not encounter Jesus, they would remain fishers of men, or tax collectors, or several kinds of people. Their encounter with Jesus culminated to a mandate, a nobler reason for their living. But you shall receive power after the Holy Ghost has come upon you and you shall be witnesses unto me, witnesses unto me on account of your encounter with me. You shall be witnesses unto me. You shall be witnesses unto me. There is no man I know who encountered the God of the Bible and a mandate was not derived out of that encounter. If you were Moses and you encountered the God of the Bible, you suddenly became a deliverer out of that encounter. If you were Gideon and you encountered God, that warrior deliverer part of you will rise. Are we together now? Everyone who encountered God genuinely, among the many blessings they received, there was a mandate that came out of it most people are trying to discover purpose and meaning outside of jesus that means they push jesus out and they say i need to know why i was born no the bible says no i come in the volume of the book hebrews 10 7 as it is written of me to do your will purpose starts with your connection with jesus you can do other ambitious things outside of jesus but genuine purpose and meaning that serves both in time and eternity starts with your encounter with Jesus Christ. If I did not encounter Jesus, I would not be in ministry. Only God knows what else I would have been doing with my life. Perhaps I would have been dead with the kind of background I came from. Quickly. Many of you here, God has saved you, gave you a revelation of Jesus. But among the many blessings you received that some of you are not acting out, is that there is a mandate everybody say a mandate there is a mandate upon your life and your destiny and that mandate is beyond pulpit ministry don't limit the service of the kingdom to just being a preacher an apostle a prophet and all of that if you do so there will not be enough space for everybody because the bible says he gave some but there is something he gave all he gave everybody a mandate out of that all there were some who were called
to be apostles and prophets and evangelists and pastors and teachers are we together you may not be called into the fivefold ministry but some of you are kingdom financiers merchants of the gospel within the marketplace that is a mandate that came out of your encounter run with it with diligence some of you are called into prophetic psalmistry run with it with diligence some of you are called into leadership leadership at a global scale it doesn't matter what the mandate is if it came out of that encounter it is the blessing of meeting jesus and there is a role that that mandate has to play in god's program overall are we together we're going to pray jesus the son of the living god he came and walked upon the earth for this threefold mission and he did it so well we are the fruits of the excellency of that mission we are proof he did not fail he's brought many sons to glory now the nations are waiting for the revelation of that same jesus through our lives jesus has gone to be with the father today seated at the right hand of god but we are extensions of him extensions of his possibility and let me tell you the truth the nations the harvest the global harvest is at the mercy of the efficiency of our witness if our witness is poor and lame then many people will not come to the saving knowledge of that jesus there are two things we are going to do right now number one is we are going to pray i want us to rededicate our lives corporately unto the program of god afresh it's not enough to know about jesus i want you to make a renewed covenant with your life and destiny no more empty living no more profitless living no more useless living it is not enough to know about jesus i have found my place and my mandate by knowing him by encountering him someone bow your head in prayer let it be from the depth of your heart there is a mandate upon your life by reason of your encounter with Jesus it is not enough to know him he depends on your witness for the nations to know him someone is praying let an apostle rise from this conference a prophet rise from this conference an evangelist rise from this conference a pastor rise from this conference a teacher rise from this conference a worshiper rise from this conference an entrepreneur rise from this conference god is depending on you and i god is depending on you and i god is depending on your witness go ahead and pray i rededicate my life again go ahead and pray i rededicate my days again I have spent 30 years of my life serving the flesh 30 years of my life serving profitless systems but for the rest of my life I want to be a witness a witness to this Jesus a witness to this Savior a witness to this healer a witness to this deliverer a witness to this lifter a witness to this advocate he gave everything for you please pray it is not enough to know him you must accept the responsibility the mandate that comes the peace listen the life that you receive is for you the peace that you receive is for you the joy that you receive is for you but the assignment that you receive is not for you it is for the nations Keep the life you have received. Keep the peace you have received. Keep the joy you have received. But don't keep your mandate to yourself. Your mandate is to the nations. The mandate is to the nations. Take a minute and rededicate your life again. Whether you are a student on campus, you are a career person, you are a preacher, you are a captain of industry, an entrepreneur, make a covenant with your destiny that my life, my songs, my message, my resources will be pro-kingdom, advancing the name of Jesus. Advancing the name of Jesus.
advance in the name of Jesus that the nations will know him that they too may be saved Europe knowing Jesus America knowing Jesus Australia knowing Jesus Wari Delta state every part of this state knowing Jesus the south south the southeast the southwest the middle belt the northeast the northwest knowing Jesus until the knowledge of the glory of the Lord covers the earth as waters the sea in Jesus name we pray in Jesus name we pray in Jesus name we pray let me have your attention please you are in this place and from the start of the conference speaker after speaker worshiper after worshiper whilst you heard people mounting this stage and revealing different dimensions of their understanding about Jesus perhaps you came here today in this auditorium and all the expressions and for those following online and you are saying apostle on hearing you teach I can say for a, short, for, for a certainty that I've not met this Jesus not the one you just talked about maybe I met another one not the son of God not the savior not the healer maybe I met a cruel person somewhere who sold a Jesus for me that I'm finding out now is not the one who died I want the one who died for me I want the one who loved me enough to give himself for me and for those who are saying I have encountered this Jesus but I've derailed I cannot say I have a functional relationship with that Jesus I want to count one to five wherever you are not everybody I presume may be able to come here but let's start with those who can make it here listen to me don't be emotional about this responding to an altar call should be done consciously with an understanding that I am ready to make it right with Jesus Christ I know that there's someone here whilst you heard me teach the Spirit of God the Spirit of grace was brooding over your mind that your life can be better than it is the eternal life that Jesus brought you have not yet received the peace that he brings you have not yet received the joy that he brings you have not yet received even the mandate that has been allotted to your destiny you've not received the journey starts right here it starts with him I'm going to count one to five as many who are saying apostle I want to make it right with Jesus or you are rededicating your life I want you to run not just stand come and cry before Jesus let it be from the depth of your heart don't kneel because of space Go ahead. One. No other name like the name of Jesus. There's no other name like the name of the Lord. No other name like the name of Jesus. He's worthy of glory. He's worthy of honor. He's worthy of power and praise. Two, someone is coming. Let's celebrate them as they come. There's nothing to be ashamed of. Apostle, I need Jesus. This Jesus, the Savior, the Redeemer. Keep clapping as they come, young and old, male and female. There is always room at the cross. Listen, while they are coming, let me teach you something. Responding to an altar call means you are willing and prepared to relinquish your ways and to receive his. It's not just an emotional response to a preacher's sermon. Coming to Jesus has an implication. That you are saying, I trust your way more than my own way. And I'm willing to lay down everything and embrace your life. This is what these people are doing. Help me. See how far you run. I'm so glad. 
you found me worthy I can see I can tell and I know it's your grace all my needs I will see my brothers and my sisters I want to thank you thank you for the courage to come and stand before Jesus and for someone who is following whether by television you're watching from the internet I want you to know that this business of Jesus is not just a church thing he desires that all men that includes you to be saved and then to come onto the knowledge of the truth and I'm challenging you that as I lead these precious ones to pray that prayer of salvation join them right where you are I may not be there we may not see you but Jesus is there with you and I'm grateful to all those who are standing I'm seeing those at the overflow who are standing thank you thank you for responding to that call for all of you who are responding to this call can I request that you lift your right hand high above your head as a sign of surrender then say this after me as loud and as clear as you can say Lord Jesus one more time Lord Jesus tonight I have heard your word I believe in Jesus as the son of the living God I believe that you died for my sin I believe that you rose again for my justification right now I receive Jesus alongside his life in my heart and I declare that the power of sin Satan hell and the grave is broken over my life I am the righteousness of God in Christ from tonight I go forward ever and backward never amen keep your hands lifted father thank you for these precious ones they have come declaring your lordship over their lives and the Bible says as many who will come to you you will in no wise cast away I decree and declare by the authority of scripture that your sins are forgiven and that the power of sin, Satan, hell and the grave is broken over your life. The grace to live the victorious Christian life is imparted upon you and I declare that this is a new beginning for you from tonight. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. Now here's what I want you to do all of you while we clap for you appreciating God for your life. There are counselors waving the placard. Please let me request that you just follow them. They will have a word with you. They will pray with you. I understand there are slips that have been given to you. Please let me request that you kindly fill it as legibly as you can and then return it. Let's honor them as they go everyone. Honor them as they go. God bless you. Honor them as they go. Is this the best you can do, Champions Cathedral? Hallelujah. Please rise to your feet. We are wrapping up. Let me speak over your life. I come in the name of that Jesus, the one who is Savior, the one who is King, the one who has called us and given us this apostleship in the name that is above all names. Everything that is inconsistent with the blessings that come with knowing Jesus. I command it to live your life now. I command it to live your destiny now. Let sickness live your life now. Let demonic oppressions live your life now. Let failure live your destiny now. In the name of Jesus Christ. I decree and declare that everything that needs to happen to your life. To help you express the reality of this life you have received. Let it come speedily. If it is favor, let it come speedily. If it's breakthrough, let it come speedily. If it's divine helpers, may they come speedily. No one who has been part of this conference will have a reason to say it does not pay to serve Jesus. In the name of Jesus Christ, I decree and declare that everything Jesus died to give that is yet to find expression in your life everything he gave his life for that is yet to find expression in your life beginning from tonight manifest it the wisdom that came with jesus manifest it the grace that came with jesus manifest it the power that came with jesus manifest it 
he fulfilled his assignment you will fulfill your own assignment in the name of jesus jesus had help us may you have help us listen until his assignment was over no one could kill him i also pray for you that in the name of jesus you will not die while in service the power orchestrated by hell to take your life that you will not see the end of this year we shut the mouth of the grave for your sake in the name of jesus as touching the missions of jesus he needed supplies and he did not lack he even had a treasurer i pray for you the spirit of poverty that is crippling your finances leaving you in shame and reproach so you do not have the liberty to serve by the grace of god let supplies come to you let supplies come to you from the north the south the east and the west if it needs to come to a job may you find that job if it needs to come through business go and prosper if it needs to come through your investments may it multiply by your godly means i declare you shall not want you shall not want you shall not want you shall not want in the name of jesus and for champions cathedral everyone who is a part of this local assembly and this great church family i agree with all the graces here represented and in the name of jesus the bible says they that be planted in the house of god that they will flourish in the courts of our god that even in old age they will be fat and flourishing therefore i declare flourish go forward advance make progress you and your children you and your spouse victory over victory lifting over lifted breakthrough over breakthrough in the name of jesus christ may the lord bless you may the lord increase you in jesus mighty name we pray tell us in the comment section where you were watching us from and if you've got any testimony for us kindly share with us thank you for watching in the name of jesus drought in your life that even when it is physical rainy season it is still dry season spiritually financially and otherwise i decree and declare let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin